Now that I've got the bow um, ribs in, um, we need to trim them down, um, get them roughly the same depth coming in, and then we'll fit the deck um, on top of it. But before we do that, we need to clean up the ribs, get them all to the same height of the planks and generally clean them up so that they um, look consistent and look all of the same size. Once this was done, uh, we tried to fit the deck, adjusting as we went along. Not very pretty. Um, so we'll have to make a second one, but at least we get um, a proper idea of the fit and we can mark it out now and make one that fits perfectly. And I pencil in the addition that I have to add to the piece and then we can shape that and put the center line on each of these. This would be very difficult to do with paper. Um, I tried it, but of course the paper moves up and down. So it's much better. If you had some balsa, it would probably even be easier to make. Um, the, the problem is balsa too will tend to bend, but at least you'd get the correct shape. And then make a plywood piece. Many of you don't suffer from the problem of termites, but those of us who live in the tropical um, regions, um, termites can really just devastate our work. And I know this because having built a model of the Bellona, one day I picked it up and there were termite droppings all below it, and I had to have it fumigated. So from that day on, um, I tend to treat the internal inside of all my models with termite fluid. In northern climates, you may be subject to a powder post beetle, which is equally as bad. So there's really no excuse not to do some level of treatment. And I leave it for you to figure out what um, chemical you're going to use to treat it. The important thing is having put the termite fluid on. It's not just good enough to leave it there. You should really seal it in um, so it doesn't rub off and it keeps the, the treatment in the wood which is where you, you really want it to be. So I will seal the inside of here. I'm going to use rub on poly which I'm going to paint on. Um, but the truth is any, any paint um, would, would seal it in. And it smells so high you tend to want to put it outside and let it dry off uh, before you seal. Although not shown, I'm quite sure they had some braces and I'm going to put one in here and there's another one that fits here. There is also a front brace under the um, deck, just rounds it off and, and also gives it some strength. And so now we go to one of the more challenging pieces, which is the breast hook, which is found in the bow. And um, this is made from a solid piece of timber, normally um, cut similar to that uh, picture that was up on the left. Um, it would have been made probably from the same um, tree that the keel was cut from 
um, many opportunities when you're cutting down a big tree like that to find the first or second branch and then cut it out and then turn it into a, a board and you'll get the perfect piece. In the case of this model, of course, I just cut it out of a piece of mahogany. Um, I just don't have access to natural trees um, with a natural bend. But that would be the strongest way to make it because the grain would be running the correct way for the entire length and breadth of the um, of the breast hook. Now that that's done, we um, line up the front seat, the first seat, and um, this is what we were really looking forward to because this really um, dictates and determines a lot that's going to take take place behind us. Um, the bench is 11 and a half inches wide and two inches thick. Um, and the ribs fit both on the front and the back. Well, I'm so happy um, to reach this spot. As in a sense, we've handled all the challenges. This boat is now correct based on the based on the book. So you can take this support out. I'm not sure if you can see this, but the curve is getting quite complex. I've transferred it onto this piece of wood and um, which will give you a better idea of the complexity of the curve. We might get two more in like this, um, but certainly when we reach down here, the piece of wood will have to be about that thick and it starts losing its strength because the grain is starting to go in the wrong direction. I'm going to try some 25 inch wide boards to see how these will work out. It's again looking at the book I realized that in fact they were all the ribs were made from solid pieces there were no joins um, even though the grain was running the wrong way they just used cross braces at the bottom to help with the consistency um, I actually made up two little blocks um, that were 14 inches wide and that allowed me um, to, to put the frames in in the exact space every time both on the left and the right so it's, it's very useful when you have um, a, a certain task that has to be re repeated over and over again a simple little jig that is worth its weight in gold We're up to a rib nine and about to put the second seat in and things with the build seem to be settling down now. We still have a support to put on the, the back end of the first seat which we'll do in due course. It's interesting the technique that you learn. Um, at first when I was building these ribs, I kind of started from the top and worked down. But actually it's much easier to start from the bottom and work your way up. Having said that, I'm still not making any gain in time. There's still half an hour roughly. In goes the second seat. Um, the sequence we've developed is to put the seat in first and then once that's stuck, slip the ribs in. Remember this is 11 and a half inches. One of the key challenges is always referencing back to some point to make sure that on the left and the right the, um, the distances are exactly the same. Otherwise, you'll start to get the model going askew. I learned that the hard way um, on the Swan Practicum. So 
using this protractor and a reference point at the bow again you can just see that line that I just made about two inches off to the port and if you don't pick that up each time you move forward it actually really exaggerates itself so that by the time you reach the back of the boat that could be six or seven inches which would actually look visually un, um, not square so again we just recenter that off and um, it's about an inch about an inch off so we're going to start to go to the bigger boards these are about three feet wide and um, we should be able to get the ribs in the book makes reference to finding bent timbers to make up the ribs but when you look at the photographs in the book um, you could clearly see from the grain that that's not so um, certainly up the islands in the Beckway boats, um, all those ribs are actually bent pieces of wood. I don't know whether they cut bent or whether they steam bend them, but certainly in the case of, of this book and this model, um, the, the grain was certainly running, particularly in the back where you have a big bend, the grain was running in the wrong direction. Well, this is an important milestone for us. Um, we've reached the third seat and what we're going to do now is just put the balance of the frames in. That leaves us 10 frames to put in and then we'll come and start to put in the floors which are the connections to the bottom of the, um, of the frames as they go across the keel. The book doesn't tell us how many floors or interconnecting braces um, we have. The one picture we have in the book shows every other rib has a floor and it really refers to the back of the boat, not the front of the boat. Again, looking at the photographs, the, f the floors or cross brace seems to end under seat one. There is one bulkhead which is under um, the third seat and we're going to put that in now because I think it might be uh, problematic or more difficult to put in um, when I start to put the cross braces in and maybe even when I start to put in the back ribs. The, um, the bulkhead goes just below the seat and um, there's a flashing that's attached to the seat. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a water seal, uh, it certainly didn't have to be, but um, if they were carrying a seine, it would keep the seine from going from one area of the boat to another. So I'm sure that's really the purpose of the bulkhead. Of course, it'll add tremendous strength um, to the boat itself. We've run over time, so I'm going to bring this video to an end. Um, next week we will finish putting the ribs in the boat the cross braces or floors and all the little pieces there's some support on the benches um, so we'll clean up all those pieces and literally finish hopefully the inside of the boat and if we have time we'll get into the inner gunnel and there's some frames on the back and on the corner that we need to get in so see you next week